That's great. Hey everybody, good morning and welcome back to Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host Anne and disembodied voice Justin. How is everybody this morning? It's a gloriously, extremely rainy morning here in uh, SoCal, or NorCal, sorry, NorCal, so South Bay, North Cal. <laughs> we're so confused. <laughs> we're North, we're South, we don't know what we are, but we know that we're rainy. Very rainy, and I love rainy days, so this is... Uh, Yesterday was also a rainy day, but it was a less committed rainy day. It was the it was the rainy day that wasn't quite sure it wanted to be a rainy day. And this is definitely the by golly we are a rainy day kind of rainy day out the window right now. So, and we need the rain. Our our trees and plantlets need the rain. So, hey guys, how are you? I'm seeing a lot of yays and a lot of hypes and a lot of Anne. Morning. All right, we're gonna pop over to Cam just cause. Just cause. Look, I did green work yesterday on statue. So let's uh, talk about a little bit what I did. Because yesterday was uh, do some green work off the clock kind of day, apparently. Just because I wanted to do some stuff. Like I wanted to fill that crack in her shoulder, which you can see now, is greened. We haven't painted over it yet. I don't know how flush I managed to get that join. I was trying to get it done. I wasn't trying to make it perfect. So we'll see. I may need to file it a little bit. So yeah, so here we are on Statue Lady. I think today, um, what I'd like to do is, since I mounted her on her base, um, I would like to actually paint at least the top part of this obviously if i'm gonna be holding on to this then i don't want to paint it yet hey jedi jared 21 months thanks boom bang yeah i like making living statues like painting them like they're actually coming to life so i think it's a pretty cool effect um i've done it before but uh not not quite on this something as dramatic as this where i put the like the tiger striping kind of where like the magic is going across the piece once we attach her shield, and I looked at it yesterday, but definitely it's not attached time yet. Although I did re-sculpt a little ledge for it to sit on because I accidentally uh, took the one that was there off. So uh, essentially when we go to paint this, to continue the effect, I really need the striping to actually go onto the shield. So that'll be cool. So we may paint this arm this morning because I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to need to get that, get everything at least blocked in so that I can uh, suggest all that magic going across the face. I think our accent color is going to be a Spartan red, a healthy Spartan red. The feathers up here, the wrap, and the shield. Um, technically, her crest would also be red, except she's so obviously stone uh, as far as the sculpt up there that I don't feel like I can do it. Technically, yes, we could make it painted stone, but that's very, uh, it's very dicey, guys, because then it really starts to fight with... Um, kind of fight with your concept of what what's stone and what's uh what's not when you paint something like this when you're putting a color other than your stone color on it you're suggesting that that is life not stone which is why taking this type of tact with it doesn't work so much if we had painted the whole thing like a statue just with the gray and the cracks and then we had painted or glazed some colors over it that would be our painted statue we could get away with that then but because we're doing it this way Painting something like the crest or something would totally throw us off as far as this whole head being stone, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, we've got, if you want to see how I kind of set it up, it's not actually as hard as you think it is, Boombox, or Boom Bang. Um, I, I, we have a Reaper's Guide VODs uh, on Twitch and also a YouTube channel where we copy over all our stuff. So if you look at the earlier uh, sessions with her, it isn't as hard as you think it is. I mean, the highlighting uh, with layering does take some technical uh, ability just because you need to know how to layer, which does does take some knowledge of paint consistency and um, what type of brush you're using, what kind of palette you're using, and the brush stroke and brush unloading and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, it's not as hard as it looks to get a basic effect like this. All right, I'm actually going to take a mold line off the arm here. I just noticed just because it's bugging me using a knife for that since this is bones black the 44 number tells you that this is the item number if you want to order a set of these there are two of them male and female i have made them so safe for work they actually come and not safe for work um i needed them to be safe for work because twitch so that's why we have a battle bikini on this statue but you know i'm okay with battle bikinis so i have no problem with that so I just want to make sure that I get any bit of mold lines that I kind of missed the first time. Given it's a stone statue and this arm is definitely still stone, but I still don't want to have any that are really annoying on it. Yeah, the statues, Inara makes a good point too, Boom Bang, is that the statues are really good models to just start um experimenting on like if you are interested in learning like layering which is essentially a form of blending um otherwise it's just me painting stripes <laughs> um but uh but these are good models for that because they're they're all one thing right it's all statue so and it's pretty big which makes it a little bit easier to paint in my opinion um so these are not a bad this is not a bad model to get into and since it's bones it's really inexpensive especially for the size of the piece relatively speaking if you're trying to buy this in metal it would be far more expensive so all right so there we go now i've got those lines out now i will need to green stuff this shoulder also unless i wish to suggest that the statue has joints but we haven't done that so we're not gonna start now um so uh, what i'll do is i'll essentially once we have this leg finish soft finish the leg that's behind the shield because it's really hard to see right but you can see it if you tilt it like this so you do need to deal with it um once we have that leg set up then we can uh probably want to paint the back of the shield first and the front and the arm just base coat everything and then get it in place so then we can work on that so essentially the shield will be the last part to go on um, oh, I need to set my focus. One second. Let me make sure I'm not wobbling you guys with my focus. There, now she's set. So yeah, the shield will be the last thing to go on. We'll probably paint a lot of it before we attach it. Oh, you just ordered them. Good. Yeah, they're nice statues. The the guy, I actually like the guy statue a lot because he's got a Gorgon head, a Medusa head on a shield. That's really well done. Yeah, it's cool. If you're going to fight, fight dirty. Yes, a goblin in a battle bikini, I believe it would be effective. All right, so let's get our paints mixed up. And of course, I kept my, uh, my notes on my mixes here. So I can get these all going. And then we're, we are going to just kind of like block everything in. We are at that point, I think, where we, where we start to block everything in. Uh, just to get everything set up and that way we can work on whatever we want so let me just grab my paint and yeah it's a rare bug lift sighting how you doing bug lifts it's been a while let's see so we need our wolf gray i just reorganized all my paint drawers so i'm like ooh, where is everything wait i can find everything easily wolf gray 9434 is our main statue color i add a little bit of stone gray into that because it's a little browner and darker because wolf is a little bit lighter stone also has pretty good coverage so it helps um bleached linen i think i have up from yesterday yep so here's our statue colors so for highlights i'm uh, mixing in some bleached linen which is an off-white 
Again, I'm going with a color that's slightly brown. All these, all these off whites and grays have one thing in common, and that is that they have a little yellow or brown in them. Um, and I think I keep my brown liner out. Yeah, brown liner. There we are, 9064. So those are our stone colors. And then for our skin, I think I kept ruddy flesh in the mix. I did. So a little bit of ruddy flesh to give it kind of an olivey tone. And then actually we're using a brown instead of a using a straight up brown color instead of a skin color although leather brown is very close to tan skin it's also much more flat so for this i'm trying to go with a bit more of an olivey tone for the skin and a less um not as uh pinkish not caucasian more tanned tanned olive skin so there's all of our main colors and then our accents are going to be our accents could be red and we haven't chosen a red yet We'll have to think about it. Spartan red was a pretty, pretty good red. So, <laughs> Bug Lips and Quindy are adding danger, danger to the channel. Is that it? We are very dangerous. We're a very dangerous show. Not really. <laughs> We're pretty chill in the morning, actually. Before Anne's caffeine like puts her over the top. Let's see. All right, cool. So my ratios are pretty straight up. Um, they're they're a lot like you notice. I use a lot of four to ones, four to one, four to one. That's just what I default to. Keeps makes it easier for me to remember my mixes. But that said, I do not mind mixing things. Yeah, it's not shining here. It's a beautiful rainy day here. Is it still raining? Yes, it's still convincingly raining outside. Good. Ah, uh-oh. Got a little bit of extra ruddy flesh in there. That's all right. It'll be fine. Don't sweat it if, like, your paint, like, bubbles, like, and spews a tiny drop and it gets your ratio off. That much, that little paint won't uh, throw it off. All right, Wolf Gray is our next baby. Gray and freezing where you are. Ah, it's pretty cold here. It was in, it was around 50 yesterday. I still took my walk, even though it was raining. Now let's get this out. Four drops of wolf gray, and then I'll show you guys my color there. And then just a drop of stone gray to, to darken it. I wanted to start with a lighter gray, which is why I mostly am going with the wolf. Um, you can see though that stone gray makes a very good shadow for wolf gray and wolf gray likewise would make a very good highlight for stone gray if you didn't want to go all the way up to uh, weathered stone. You got snow yesterday trouble and you sound excited about it so you must be in a weird warm climate state. <laughs> Kill for 50 yeah yeah i know the, the like i said the the bay area steals all the best weather in the u.s and just hides it <laughs> we're like our weather ours oh you live in tennessee yeah so so yeah you are in a warmer weather state then it is exciting All right, what paint, what brush do I want to use today? Do I want to use my older or my newer? See, the problem is that now I, now that I found a fresh Raphael, the question is, should I use it? Should I, should I use the power of the fresh brush? Now, actually, I find that brushes work a little bit better after they've been, uh, been uh, broken in. But actually, this is interesting because uh, these are obviously produced at two different si times. They uh, have two different um, barrel si barrel stamp sizes. I was maybe thinking to show you guys kind of how the brush, how my brushes morph as they get older. Yeah, I can do that. So my brushes thin out, and it's probably because um, when I don't clean them, but I rinse them a lot. So these are two different ages of uh, the same brush, Raphael eighty four oh eight. Kalinsky Sable size one. You can even see that they were done at different times in the company's past because look at the difference in the type size. So either these were produced in two different factories with a slightly different stamp or they were produced in two different lots. 
That said, the one on the right is the one I've been abusing for the last, you know, six months or so. You can see that it is slightly thinner and that it doesn't have as pronounced of a taper, but that the tip is still razor sharp. So that's the key with these Klinsky Sables. You might pay 18 bucks or 15 bucks for a brush, but you can sit and abuse it. Well, okay, not really, really abuse it, but you know, you can sit and use it consistently every day for months on end. And even if it thins down a little bit and loses some hairs, it's still going to be perfectly paintable. So... Oh, one of those storms, huh? Yeah, I remember those hailstorms. I don't miss, I don't miss the, I still have a picture on my phone of, of hail that is like as wide across as this model, like as, as it was like this big. Like I showed it to somebody and they're like, is this a joke? <laughs> I showed it to somebody from a different state and I'm like, no, this is how big hail gets in Texas. Like it's rare, but it happens. It was crazy. I, they were so huge. I froze them to have proof. I put two in the freezer. So yeah, serious hail. Anyway, so that's kind of how these brushes wear down. You can see there isn't much of a difference. It's just the one on the right is a little bit. You can see that it's the worn one because you can see I've got a little bit of paint starting to build up in the ferrule. So I may, if I notice that it has an issue, then I'm going to clean it. But I'm not actually going to dip this in the brush cleaner and restore, guys, until it has an issue. Um, yeah, exactly. Pretty crazy in our, right? Just balls of ice. Yep. Yeah, so, so essentially this is kind of key because, uh, I, I mean, if you condition your brushes, you can bring it back. But I, I always feel like cleansers strip a little bit of the oils off of the hairs. Like, they just, they tend to dry out the hair a little bit. Because you are putting a soap on it, right? You're putting something, something caustic that strips paint. So, so I don't clean, even though I can see that there's a little bit of buildup down here. I will not clean this brush until I have a problem with it. Once I have a problem with it, once the tip starts to split or once, you know, I'm, it's just not performing as well, then I will clean it and then I will condition it. But I don't believe in preemptive cleaning. I don't believe in periodic cleaning. I just go with it. Um, because I don't, I, I sometimes think that, you know, it, well, it's like, it's like our hair is used to being washed every day, but some people just, you know, wash their hair once a week and their hair is like perfectly healthy and fine. It's just what you're used to. Right. Um, but I just, uh, there's just, it's just kind of my conviction that, that I, I don't want to, why fix it if it ain't broke is essentially uh, what I'm, what I'm working with. Hey, cool pack. How's it going? So anyway, let's use, let's use our broken in brush and let's mix up our paint and we're going to go about five to one paint to water for our base coat. So since we have five drops in each of these, even though I got a slightly bigger bubble of uh, ruddy flesh in that one, we'll just put one drop in each. The amount of water you put in these is going to directly determine how long they stay at the consistency you want them. Oh, I only clean them like, I, I think I maybe clean my brushes maybe once a year and that's only if that it's really gotten bad. If you don't feel bad. So we've got our skin color, our base skin color, which is kind of bronzed. And then our stone color, our base stone color. And again, you can see the green stuff that I did this week, uh, yesterday. Um, the other thing I did other than blend in the shoulder so that I could touch it up today and paint over it, which is partially why we are mixing our uh, skin color is that I also blended in the base. Not Nomad Zeke, never, ever, ever. You are welcome to, you know, ingest toxic chemicals if you feel like you need more. I mean, you shouldn't really feel like you need more. They're all around us, so really, you know. <laughs> One would think you would get your daily allowance of toxic chemicals without licking weasel butt. But, you know, mm, eh, your mileage may vary. So I did some blending in work. Um, I added these stones, like I said, so that the shield had something because I cut the tab off the bottom of the shield because I didn't realize it was supposed to slot in and it wasn't a great fit anyway. So, uh, so I just made a little ledge of stone. I put a green blob there and I put the shield in position so that it squished a little indent into it. And then I just sculpted that as rocks while preserving the indent. So now it sits perfectly in there. Um, and, uh, the rest of this is just because the base was a little, uh, concave. 
So there was a little bit of, you can even see a little tiny bit left. There's a tiny crack there where the base didn't sit perfectly flush. This is also a little bit convex or con concave, sorry. So there was a little bit of a gap essentially where I put this base on top of the pillar. And so I didn't like the gap unsightly. So I decided to fill it by putting some little rocks and pebbles on just like these. Um, and I also did that on the back, just essentially adding a bit more rubble. Yeah, thanks for slapping in Shadow Raven. That's fine. I empower you that, that it's an and powered slap or a smack, as they say. Hold on, I got my thing caught in my thing. There we go. All right, so, so essentially just wanted to show you guys what I was doing. Uh, if I have fresh green, I do this kind of work. I tend to do it all at once. I tend to wait. Like I waited until I had four models that all needed green work together, and then I just did it all yesterday. Um, I tend to like to save up and just go ahead and do that. So let us put, oh, I think I got some water. Is that water or is that glue? I think that's glue. All right. So we're going to get our uh, base coat on our stone real quick. I'm going to, I just, also you don't have to prime green. Like you can if you want to with some brush on primer. I just paint over it. I paint over it if it's a, an area that's not going to get touched. And it's really not going to get touched here, right? Like who's going to go and try to pick her up by the feet? So... There's really, in my mind, I'm like priming at that point is just an extra step that I don't find very necessary. So I do want to probably mix up some shadow here because uh, to make this base go faster, I'm going to probably want to wet blend. So I will mix up some of my stone shadow after I get this first coat over the top. Also, with every additional coat you put on, it's going to get more durable. So two coats of uh, base doesn't uh, doesn't hurt you. Oh, we have a little bit of a irregular rim that I didn't notice before. A little bit of a mold line around here. Sneaky mold line. Very sneaky. I mean, it's a good place to put it, right? Right around the rim. You just have to make sure that you catch it if you don't want that uh, that edge to kind of come out. Heh. <laughs> Tell you a story about painting. I didn't say I didn't actually do the call out by name this morning. Usually I try to recognize people, but then I feel sad because I'm like, well, maybe everybody, all the people that don't get recognized, feel bad. So you know, maybe I shouldn't do my my Mickey Mouse Club slash romper room. All right, just trying to get all this stuff set up, trying to get the mold line off so that it doesn't bother me because Anne doesn't want to be annoyed today. All right, that's a little better. Yeah, exactly right. Well, or I'm not even priming. I'm just painting at this point in base coat priming. But yes, when you prime things, that's why I actually prime and I assume I'm going to be priming twice. I tried to explain that to David the other day. I think he gave me a funny look. But it's like, if, if priming is always going to show me things that I miss, I should just embrace that as a step in the prep process and assume that I will be priming twice. So I'll do a preemptive prime that isn't as heavy just to expose issues and then I'll deal with them and then I'll prime again. Just going to get all this, make sure that all of this gets covered. So that we have a layer over the plastic before we start doing crazy things. And cover up all this green stuff. And I'm leaving it pretty thick some, in some places that it doesn't matter. I mean, it's thinned, but it's, uh, I mean, if anything, it's just going to make the detail kind of blend together here on the base. And I'm okay with that. But in reality, one coat of paint unless you, it's extremely thick paint, is not generally going to obscure detail. The exception is um, the actual Reaper brush on primer. Uh, that is potentially a gap filler, so be aware that it is very thick out of the bottle and that you should be careful with it. If you're not intending to fill in detail, um, thin it a little bit before you put it on your model or make sure that you're not leaving it pool, letting it pool. And I'm just going to paint over this with stone because... This leg, although it is uh, partially turning bronze, it's not going to be all bronze with this greave like this leg is. So 
got to make sure that we're kind of setting ourselves up and then we can break our rules. Set yourself up for success and then break them. There, that's good. Excellent. You remember Romper Room? <laughs> I think you're in good, uh, I think you're fine. I'm sure there are current, current shows that emulate that style. Well, unless it didn't work, right? Like they do, they do, they do a lot of kind of like studies and uh, with children's television, like people are pretty hardcore in trying to figure out what what's sticky, right? What really, um, what kids will really listen to. So, Malcolm Gladwell talks about it in the Tipping Point, I think, with Sesame Street, about how they how they figured out the format of the show and Blue's Clues. Do do do. -do. Hey, Beanmitch, thank you for the nine-month resub. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Those are older than me. Or, okay, they were on when I was a kid, but uh, they didn't appeal to me. I loved Scooby-Doo and Sesame Street and... Uh... Oh, what was the other one I used to watch? I don't remember. It's been a while. It's been a while. Excellent. All right. So just going to paint the top of this right now because I'm holding on to the rest of it. So when it comes time to paint the bottom here, It'll get a very simple paint job, and I'll probably just cradle it in bubble wrap, cradle the whole model in rub bubble wrap, so I'm not rubbing off anything. The problem is that technically they're right, but the, the other problem is that drinking too much water can give you cancer. So, you know, Val. You can make fun of the cancer laws all you want. I mean, they do definitely make it harder to ship things to California. And they make things expensive. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to have an opinion. But I mean, it's it's not like California is wrong. It's just that a lot of things can cause cancer. Oh my God, Art, Art Linkletter. That was my grandma used to refer to Art Linkletter. Alrighty, let's see here. Let's mix up some shadows so we can get some of the shading in. Let's paint over our shoulder here. It's going to look a little darker and a little orangier probably because I added some uh, white to get this highlight here. So the base color on this skin is actually quite orangey. But as you can see, it is close enough to uh, what it originally looked like. Yeah, this side, on the side of the head, I blended it in really well, but I do have a little bit of a cuff on the side of the other, the other side. I should have just blended it. If I was smart, guys, okay, if you do this, do as I say, not as I do. Um... Try to skin your green like more down over the shoulder here. That way, if you do end up with a little bit of a line, it'll be like right here where the cut of the shoulder muscle is. And that is a lot easier to hide with paint. Oh, I drink a ton of water. Hydration, all about it. Mostly because when I went on my keto diet, my ketosis diet, you have to. You have to really hydrate because it's a diuretic diet. If you do not hydrate, you are in trouble on that diet. All right, so I just skinned over with a bit of knife to try to blend in that one seam on the green that I didn't like. You could also use files, but with green stuff, I find since it tends to be so um, kind of like rubbery, it doesn't work as well with the files. So Milliput or Aves would work just fine with filing. 
That actually works. I actually uh, got that to blend. Uh oh, I mar I blocked out some of my bikini. I'll have to re re uh, reinforce my bikini. That sounds like something. That's definitely battle bikini remark. I need to reinforce my bikini. Only heard if you wear battle bikinis. All right, so that blends in a little bit better. We can leave that for a second. Yeah, and I like tea, but I, I can't drink it all day. Um, everybody, everybody has their own drink. As long as you hydrate. As long as you are ingesting liquid. Like, I get downright alarmed at the, the, at the water David doesn't drink. But he seems to be doing okay, so can't really say anything. All right, that'll work for now. And then the back side, we'll see how well I blended it in back here. Yeah, pretty well, actually. We'll see once it dries. Well, yeah, Neo Show, this is actually a nude, was originally a nude model, but I altered it because Twitch won't let us do it. Twitch won't let us show nude models. So... In actuality, when you order this model online, it comes nude, as does the guy. She comes in a pack with a guy, and they are both nude. Um, so, they are sculpted. Gene Van Horn did do his research before sculpting them. But I had to put clothing on them. Because of Twitch. Yeah. But they are they are anatomically correct when you get them in, per in, uh, in person, so... Diet Coke, oof. Alrighty, so speaking of bikinis, I just want to make sure that my bikini here is uh, nicely edged. Got to edge that bikini. You got to paint them on. Paint them on like I did. Like it, I didn't even sculpt these suckers. I just... Uh, made some alterations, some knife alterations. They went under the knife. She had some plastic surgery, literally, because she's plastic. And, uh, hee 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 hee. And, um, then I, uh, I pretty much just went at her with the knife. But you can always paint one on. And I kind of wiped out a little bit of my bikini there because I had a crack that got in the way. So I'm going to re repaint my battle bikini. Although, technically, on the stone side, it's probably not as important. But now is our time to make our stone shadow color. I start with tea and switch to water. Then I go to sparkling water in the afternoon if I want a little bit of something different. All right, so let's mix up a little bit of our shadow color. I'm going to put brown liner with a uh, wolf gray and stone gray. So I'm going to use a two to one wolf to stone and then an equal amount of brown liner. So two drops of wolf, one drop of stone and three drops of brown liner and see what I get with that. I'm going to throw a couple of drops of water in it. Yeah, it's all create your, uh, create your own bikini for sure. I had to do something because I wanted to uh, wanted to do these guys for the stream. So it was like, well, so I get a nice dark gray that's very compatible with my initial dark gray or light gray. Sorry, getting a little crooked here on stream. Dear me. There it is. See, am I still rainy? Yes, I'm still rainy. Just checking outside to make sure I still have my awesome rainy day. All right, now I need to make some decisions about where I'm going to be putting bronze on this uh, leg. It probably should be right on the knee because we can see that the living flesh comes right up to that. So there should definitely be bra like a patch of bronze here. But I think I'm going to keep the foot stone. So our bronze base color is rich leather which I'm going to snag in just a second. Which I like need 50 zillion bottles of because I use it for everything. Uh, bronze color will put you over here. Rich leather is kind of a greenish, brownish, yellowish, really intense color. It's very versatile. 
works great for leather, works great for skin tones, works great for uh, bronze. And other NMM, I use it as my base for gold NMM as well. Hey, speaking of uh, NMM, tomorrow we start on a model that we're using metallics on, guys. So you have to think about and let me know. Oh, that was probably too thin. Shouldn't have added my two drops of water to that because I'm putting a base coat of her bones. I'm going to put one more drop. It has a stone color down first, so. Um, yeah, exactly. With the uh, the string string bikini, string paint bikini. Uh, but yeah, we're use, we're doing a, one of the dark dwarves. So you guys should should think about what metallics you want me to use. Like we can definitely pick one a, one silver metallic, but whether you want me to do copper or gold or bronze is up to you. As an accent on that. Oh, sorry, Zealot. Non-metallic metal is NMM. So it's kind of what I'm doing here on this bronze green. I'm using regular paint, just brown, and putting verdigris and stuff on it and doing like lighting and highlight effects to make it look like metal when it's not actually metal. Oh, you won't drop my tag. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. So it's it, it's as opposed to here. Let me grab a better NMM model and show you kind of. One second, one second. I can do this, Zealot. I can do it. Hold on, let me see. Do I have anybody who's doing NMM? Yeah. Hold on. <clears throat> Must reach her. There we go. Nobody who actually I'm painting a definite uh, lack of NMM right now, but we can bring uh, this girl back. So her armor, her steel armor, and her swords are done in non-metallic metal. So her greaves down here and her breastplate and everything are painted to look like. Um, metallic surfaces but they aren't actually uh they aren't actually metal so this is a model that i was working on for the stream and i put her aside just because there was, was so much repetition on her but again up here also i'm essentially it's a it's a way where you're kind of envisioning how light falls and you kind of learn how to place your highlights and shadows to create uh, a false illusion of metal and a lot of painters like it because if we're especially professionals because if we're working for a company uh, NMM tends to photograph better than metallic paint does. So that's how, yeah, she's got evil eyes right now because I didn't finish her. I do, I do the eyes last, but, uh, I don't want to do ruby red metallic Val. I want to do like a standard metallic for people. Like I, I almost never do metallic. So, I mean, ruby red metallic is pretty boring. You use red metallic, you add in some pearl white, uh, for your highlights or some gold, depending on what you're using. Um, and then you just go down with like purple shadows or something, I don't know, or brown. But anyway, so this is what NMM looks like, or a, an example of what NMM looks like. Um, and yeah, the reasons to use it are, are precision, you can control where your highlights are, it photographs better, um, and you can do some clever tricks about it with it too. Um, not better, but different, Preacher. So I can tell you that because I made the paint line, like I was the one who created Reaper Master Series. Uh, from the ground up, for 17 years, or 15 years, I mixed every batch. And I chose the original bases and did all the paint chemistry and formulas and everything like that. So, Reaper is different. It's not better, but it's different. And what will depend on is your painting style, probably. But, if you use a lot of thinned paint applications, i.e., you see I'm using a well palette, and I'm thinning my paint pretty pronouncedly. So, I use a lot of thin paint. I use a lot of, I do a lot of layering, I do a lot of glazing, I do a lot of, um, you know, sometimes spot washes, or, or wet blends with thinned paint, just little spot ones, and I like thinner paint for that. If you like, th if you tend to thin your paint a lot, then you're going to like Master Series, because Master Series is just more fluid out of the bottle. It takes less workable, it, less work to get it the consistency that you need it to be in. It has flow improver added to it. It stays in solution better than almost every other brand on the planet, like when you thin it. You can thin our white down like one to two paint to water, and it'll stay in solution. So it's made really, it, it really excels at, what Master Series excels at is all those thin paint applications. So what you're gonna notice is it's not as goopy and thick out of the bottle, so you're gonna have to put two coats on for base coats. But after that, if you're working with thinner applications, then you're gonna like it. 
if you really like to work with thicker paint, like like people like Sergio Calvo Rubio and everybody um, who tends to work with like a wet palette tends to prefer a thicker paint, um, then you you may not get as much mileage out of Master Series. But you, it depends, right? It, it, again, there are people who use wet palettes who do go for thinner paint applications. They're just used to mixing it to what they need. Um, but that's really the the big difference is the base and the base by the base I mean the the water mix of water and resins um, that the pigment and all the other stuff goes into and that base is going to have a heavy impact on how the paint behaves. So does that make sense? Because uh, some resins are like heavier and goopier and that's how you get that kind of heavy plasticky paint body when you squeeze it out into your palette. When you see a paint that's a little bit more fluid out of the bottle, it's not because it has water added. It's because it has a finer resin. So it's not going to be as high coverage, but it's going to thin. It's going to excel at thinned paint applications and stay in solution. So, and it's also going to be better at adhesion, which means sticking to the model, which is why I went that direction. I used to use, before I went to Reaper, before I started working for Reaper full time, um, I used everything. I was a competition level painter and I painted for commission. I, I made my living painting for a year. Um, all that sort of thing used to sell on eBay. And so I, I quickly determined like the things that I would like best in a paint that didn't currently exist. And what I got frustrated with was a lot of those paints, when you thinned them, they just fell to pieces. Like they all fell out of solution and you, know, you had to constantly mix them up to use them. Um, and they also didn't stick very well to the model. But those two things bothered me. And so when I got the opportunity to make my own line, I went in a very different direction from all the other paint lines out there. Because for me, I don't care if I have to put two coats on for a base coat as long as everything else works great. Yeah, they work They work ex ex exceptionally well with glazing and layering and all that. Mm -hmm. Anything you, Any technique that you have to thin your paint for, uh, these guys will be very good for you. They have a lot. A lot of the Master Series line is... We don't, don't just go for coverage. Like we do have higher coverage line. The bones line is our higher coverage paint line, but even there you'll notice a difference in coverage and it's based on pigment. It's like an artist paint line where if a pigment is naturally higher coverage, you'll notice the paint has higher coverage. But if you're working with a very, very transparent pigment, there's only so much coverage you can give it with the base. Um, so essentially instead of going for that thicker base, we just embrace the transparency and say, well, you know what? Transparency is really useful for glazes and layering highlights and all of that stuff. And, you know, and, and even washes, you want a fairly transparent base, right? Uh, paint. So, so that's, that's what we're doing with master series. And it is a different paint from any other paint on the planet. Um, it really, uh, it feels very different. There's definitely like a little bit of a learning curve. If you're used to thicker paint, you're going to have to get used to MSP and not thinning it as much out the gate, especially if you're used to something really thick, like a Vallejo model color or something like that. Um, Games Workshop isn't, is, is a little bit thicker on its base coat. It's hard to compare it to Games Workshop though, because GW's paint varies so much because they're putting it in those little boxes where it's like the box I'm talking about is this is a base coat paint. This is a highlight paint. This is a dry brush paint. This is a wash, right? So that means that Games Workshop actually has like five different paint lines because all of them are very different and have very different qualities. So it's hard to compare them to GW across the board. Okay. Yeah, and, it, and they will be very inconsistent for coverage because you, you can't get a high coverage yellow or red yet. Modern chemistry is still trying. But there are certain uh, factors with pigments that you just, you don't, you can't do it. Um, you can go to a certain point. You can push it to a certain point, but you can't push it beyond that point. It's just chemistry. Uh, so, so that's why some colors will always be more transparent and why coverage will always vary across a paint line. But what paint lines then try to do is they try to choose a resin that is consistent so that they can uh, at least have a slightly, you can probably increase a paint's coverage by, I want to say about 10%, 10 to 15% by the resin you use. That's just a guess on my part, having worked with a couple and looking at the differences between paint lines also. Other than that, all of the coverage tricks that you can pull are, are directly with pigment using a slightly higher coverage, like a yellow ochre pigment mixed just a little bit into your yellow to try to give it a little bit more coverage, stuff like that. Sneaky things, sneaky things, but they do impact the color. So yeah. So yeah, that's kind of a summary right there of how, how the lines differ, but master series is a very different beast and I'm very proud of that. Like I hope Reaper, now that I'm, I went part-time and remote when I moved out to be with my, my uh, guy, David, 
Um, so now it's my uh, protege, Sadie, who is uh, manning the uh, paint department, womaning the paint department. Uh, <laughs> so, but but up until that point, at least, Reaper Reaper's always been a very different paint. And I'm happy about that because not every paint line should be the same that's available, right? If, if you discover that Master Series really works for you, you know, it's a good thing that there is a paint line that's like that that is available. So I've never considered it a bad thing that we're very different from everybody else. We're just going for different goals. And in my mind, the goal should be more than just coverage. It makes sense for Games Workshop paint to be thicker because they are trying to get that, you know, one coat coverage in their base coat line for the most part to help, um, pardon me while I fix this. There we go. Uh, to, to just assist with gamers, right? They want to paint fast. They want to get it on the table. They want it to be done. And thus contrast paints, which are brilliant. Um, yeah, there we go. So I've got a little bit of, essentially I want a bit of this bronze, but I also want it going into the stone, just like this, uh, the leg up here is. I want this to be consistent. So I want part of this greave to look like this, albeit with a little more light on the front. Um, and I want it to blend into the stone like that. So I'm just making it a regular shape, like tiger stripes. Just like think about tiger stripes or wisps of uh, energy or something. And it, 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 there's no trick to it, really. You just want to pick something, uh, a shape that's, you know, irregular enough and has like little tendrils kind of wisping off. The, kind of wisping off in little tendrils is how you make it look like it's blending in. There. Excellent. Hey, John. Oh, the blue pigment? Yeah. I mean, they, they accidentally stumble into new colors uh, in the process of working with other chemicals. So, well, you should try, well, you should pick up what I always tell Preacher is, what I always say is you should definitely pick up our pure white because I think our white is the best, absolute best white uh, anywhere, any line. I don't care who you use um, this, especially if you're going to be thinning it at all or building highlights with it. It's just the best white, period, as far as I'm concerned. Um, there are harsher whites, but, but this is, I, uh, I would never use anything else. I just don't even look at any other white paint. Uh, and I do use other paint lines and try other paint lines as they come out from time to time just to keep up with, with you know, well, what's what's going on here? Um, there, are even, there even is a paint line that I personally like to use that isn't Master Series. But pure white for sure. Pure black. Our black gets rave reviews as one of the best blacks in the business. So pick up those two. Um, and then maybe pick up like a skin tone, like um, 9044 tan skin, or pick up one of our reds, like 9402 heraldic red. Whatever colors you tend to gravitate toward, just pick kind of a middle range MSP one and work with it and see what you like. Um, but I usually recommend people pick up like a uh, white, a black, a skin tone, and then random other color that they think is pretty. Uh, and just play with them and determine if you like them before you just go pull the bull, you know, pull the trigger. But yeah, if you do a lot of layering, if your blending is made by, by thinning paint and layering up highlights and shadows, um, then you're probably going to like master series. thicking to become a thing but then you just have to never never wave the water next to it reaper john yeah all of our paints mixed with each other but um the thing is about all of our whites and all of our blacks are actually different from each other sell it i did a i did i have a patreon and i do a lot of articles over there on some of this stuff uh it's patreon.com slash painting big which is my sobriquet uh in the world of patreon it has a dragon face and it's painting big um so over there, I've talked about this, but all of our whites are different. Solid white has a different, like a different flow to it and a different, it's in a different base. So it has different qualities than, than pure white. But of the two, I'd choose pure white any day of the week, just because uh, solid white is made to be more of a coverage base, which means that it's not as good when I want to thin it down and you do smooth highlighting. So, so it depends on what you want. If you want a very high coverage white, then you go solid white. There's really no reason to mix the two though. Like that just undermines both paints purpose. Um, as far as it goes, like you really should choose solid white if you want high coverage and you should choose uh, pure white if you want just the best white <laughs> ever. <laughs> 
Yeah, there you go. Buglips has it. Buglips has it. Just leave, leave it with no cap on, John. You'll be fine. There are thickening agents, actually, John, but they will give you a much goopier paint and not as smooth of a base coat. Um, Unicorn White is very close to Pure White. Hyper. Like, the Pathfinder line is the one exception. Like, even the black and white formulations in the Pathfinder line are still slightly different from our main, but they're closest to Pure White and Pure Black because it's a licensed line and it needed a Pure White and Pure Black with no frills. So I try to make everything different across all the other paint lines while I was at Reaper. And, and, and you know, it, Reaper may or may not continue on with that, uh, that tradition. I just always believed that I didn't want to charge the customer twice for the same color under a different name. But Unicorn is a perfectly good white. It's very close to pure white. Correct. Correct cool pack because either white has a lot of white pigment in it, and so it's automatically going to increase coverage on another light color if you didn't mind lightening it just a little bit. Or any, yeah, any color. I talked about that recently in my, um, I did a video on the highest coverage colors for red, orange, and yellow in uh, Master Series. And one of the tips I give in that video is to mix white in with the color that's not covering, do a coat of that, and then put the color over the top. And it, it gives you two coat coverage. Yep. I mean, yeah, the whites are all different. The blacks are all different. The blacks are mostly different in, like, color. And the whites are different as far as base and chemistry. And sometimes in, like, pigment pigment amounts and the way that we're... And the additives that we're adding in what proportions. But they're all a little bit different. So essentially just find one you like. All right. Let's see here. I'm getting very distracted because you guys are asking really good questions. So keep... Keep asking really good questions while I get some walnut brown to do the uh, pull of this spear with. I still need to get some shading on that base, too. Well, you can mix them if you want. It's just, like, there's no real reason to zell it. Pretty much the bottom line is that all Reaper paints mix with all Reaper paints, so... Bones mixes with Core, mixes with Pathfinder, you know, mixes with the old HD. They'll even mix with Pro Paint, the old, old, old canceled Pro Paint if you have it. And in general, Master Series mixes fine with other lines. In fact, uh, Luca, who does his show on our stream on Wednesday, is uh, very, very passionate about the fact that he thinks you should mix paint lines all the time. Uh, and he's really liking how Master Series mixes with the other colors, so that's cool. We didn't set out to make that a thing, but, you know, it's nice to know our paint chemistry is uh, stable. Right, so I'm just going to put a dark color on this pole. When you get these long spear poles, there's really nothing you can do to them. They really wouldn't be big enough to show a grain. So the best you can do is just, I usually just paint them dark and then I highlight them just very minimally. Paint them dark because it's not an important part of the model. It's just a weapon. Um, and the most important part of this weapon is the pointy end with staves. It's with the staff. It's the top. So, uh, don't put a lot of work into part of the model that is not important. If it's just kind of there and it's just meant to balance out the top of the spear, then it doesn't need a lot of work. When you paint something dark, you're essentially, um, making it making people not look at it. Think that way too. Because when the human eye sees a dark space, it tends to look right past it the first time unless you do something to that space to attract the eye. So you can accidentally um, screw yourself up there if you uh, are using a lot of dark colors and then you use maybe a bright accent color but it's not really in a place that is important. And that all do all people do is stare at the accent. Boop. There we go. Got that. I think we got a little bit back of there. There we are. Oh boy. Uh I'm missing missing some stuff. Missing stuff. I can't tell. MLE. Okay. 
That's your name. Thanks. Yeah, the marble's working a little bit. I mean, I, part of it is marbling, and this is actually not... This is actually um, not so much marble as the statue is turning from stone to flesh. So it's not... Not marble particularly, although I would use these kind of shapes if I wanted to set up a marble. But I wouldn't be using colors that were as different, or I would be mixing them together a bit more. Um, when doing marble, it's just always to, always best to get a, a picture and then try to work from what you see. Uh, let's see here. No, you don't have to throw out a bunch of paint, I mean, to begin using Refer. It'll play, it should play nicely with everything. Everything should play nicely with everything except for a brand like Tamaya. Or Tamiya. I never am quite sure how to say it. Um, the Japanese brand that's an old, old hobby brand. Like, the, whenever a paint needs a particular thinner, or they recommend a particular thinner, then you know you're not miss, you're not um, messing with something that's going to mix well with other things. Uh... Uh, Pendrake, they're a little bit, it's because, uh, if they're, the labeling is a little bit suspect in my opinion. Notice that it says living statues metal. And yet this one definitely has a stone head. So I think that that's just a, maybe a mislabel to me. Because the other one definitely looks bronze, like it's smooth. Pure white and pure black out of stock, Preacher. What? What's the paint department doing? We should never be out of stock on pure white and pure black. Ever. That's really weird. There must be like, uh, there must be a crunch somewhere else. Hopefully, they should get them back in stock within a day. Oh, UK. Okay. Yeah, if you're in the UK, then that makes sense. Like, it's not, it's not a happy thing, but essentially Kit makes orders every two weeks, every month. So, um, if there's a, yeah, if there's a, I was going to say, we can just walk down and make, if, if in the USA, we can just walk downstairs and make a gallon. So it's not like, you know, we ever are out of stock on it. Um, uh, supply shortages. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and also the worldwide shipping problem right now is uh, screwing it up too, I'm sure. Because every time, you know, something ships, there's just not enough labor because of the pandemic. Um, to get things unpacked and get them, you know, make things move smoothly. So I guess I could totally see us having supply issues. So I'm sorry about that, Preacher. I, I apologize that we were out of stock. But yeah, the UK makes sense. That and uh, lately with um, some influential European painters uh, talking about Master Series, I'm sure that the UK warehouse is probably getting more orders because, like, Lucas started, like, experimenting with our stuff, and he's pretty influential. Has a lot of people watching his stuff. And then Kirill Kenev in Russia also likes Master Series and always talks about it. Paints with it all the time. So that can definitely uh, influence stuff. And then, yeah, add shipping problems to that, and you're, uh, you're dealing with it. Yeah, worldwide container shortage, exactly. Paleo metal color line, rare as gold, huh? Like, um, you mean the airbrush metals or just the regular metals? Cool pack. Let's see here. What do I want to do? Oh, yeah, there's a gold, there's a bronze spike down here. I need to base coat that. Just kind of, you get to this point where you just want to fill in all the blanks. And then we're going to get our little, um, we're going to get our red feathers in here. People are buying containers to make homes. Uh, similar base. No, it wasn't actually that it had a similar resin at all, Henrik. Actually, it's got the the most different resin on the planet. Um, it what it has, what it's similar, what's it, what it's a match for, is the finish. Because for me, I don't want to have to add anti shine additive to all these glossy paints to make them match MSP. So if I'm going to use another color, another, another thing, I use the tube paints, scale color artist. Those are my, you know, and most of the time I don't reach for them. I reach for them when I really need, like either I need an artist paint match or I want to mess around with some stuff. Um, or for some reason I want to mess around with some thicker paint. Uh, I, I like some of the colors a lot 
in general, though, uh, I should give you the disclaimer that even though I really liked that line, I still am using 97% Master Series in everything I do. So it's not the resin. The resin is as different as possible, like, because you're dealing with a thick tube paint uh, instead of a of the Master Series stuff. Oh, they have a line of metal color. I see. Well, apparently you could sell them on the black market now and make a bundle, Val. If they're, uh, I, I, never, I had not heard of them. Are they, they're not alcohol-based, I assume? Or are they alcohol-based? Are they, are they acrylic? Acrylic, okay. <laughs> well, okay. So what bo what core has going for it, um, Zealot is uh, is that other than a very high variety of color of uh, colors compared to the Bones line, um, it also has triads. So if you are not really comfortable with mixing yet in your color journey, um, usually they're organized in sets of three, where there's a mid tone, a highlight, and a shadow. The other thing that's different from them is they've got a bunch of specialty colors. Um, I did mention that the white and the black are the best that we make, and in my mind, the best in the business, period. Um, but in, re in, uh, in addition to that, they have things like the clear brights, which are single pigment colors, um, which are meant for mixing and popping uh, color intensity. Uh, they're great for lighting effects. They're, they're a specialty, a w an odd usage color is what I call them, because they're not high coverage. They're made for transparency and mixing. Um, and then we also have things like the liners, like the brown liner I'm using right now, which are paints that are meant to be used for lining. So for doing thin lines uh, and fine lines between, uh, between areas of your model or bringing out detail or doing things like bringing these cracks out, right? Um, they're, they're, much, they're a bit more fluid than your standard paint. Um, so you add just a little bit of water to them and they, they, they really um, create nice thin dark lines. The liners are really interesting colors and this these specialty usage paints are things that appear in core and not in the bones so also all of our additives are over there like flow improver and brush on sealer and stuff like that those all go in core so core is very much a you know a, a comprehensive um line when it comes down to it all right so let me see let's just do some shading down here i want to do some shading yeah blue liner Yep, one of my favorite colors ever, Leopard Pixie. Always have it around. It's one of the few colors. I have like five colors here, six? Six colors after I reorganized my paint area last weekend comprehensively. There are still a few colors that sit up on my desktop. Everything else is put away after I paint. But a few colors that have the honor of always sitting up here next to my camera. Blue liner and brown liner are two of those colors. Walnut brown and pure white are two of those colors. Last one, I believe, is pure black, just because. I don't use it as much, but it's there. I think that's it. I sometimes will keep, like, one or two oddities up here, too, like gray liner or corporeal shadow or black indigo, but usually it's all my, uh, all my saturated shadows or liner colors. Stuff that I use on every single model. <laughs> Come on, Lotto win. If you want if you want to get most of the awesome, you could get it in the first 108 colors. If you just buy the first 108, it gives you a lot of the it gives you the first set of liners, it gives you the clear brights, it gives you the colored metallics, um, and it gives you just a good basic lineup including clear white and pure white and uh, pure black and stuff. So I, I think that's a very useful set. Uh, do I want to do that in red? No, I'll do that in brown. So, all right, let's just do some wet blending. I want to put some shadows in here. I need to bring out some of this. Uh... Got a little bit, a lot of water. I dumped a huge drop of water into this to thin it down a little bit. There are times you just want a heavy wash and you may as well just like, you know, throw some water at it and then brush paint into it. Sometimes I am very imprecise. 
So I want some shading, I want some depth, I want these cracks to come out. So kind of threw together a very rough wash there. Uh, there's a, yeah, 216, but then there's also the Kickstarter colors. I mean, there's more colors in core than just that 216. But yeah, as far as the big box, it's uh, like that. That's why usually when people are starting out, okay, so if you have limited budget and you want to get into Master Series, the best set to buy is the starter set. That's an 11 color set, which includes pure black and pure white, and also some of the colors that I feel are very, very useful, just in general. Um, it's 11, only 11 colors, so it's really, really affordable, and it gives you the chance to try some key Master Series colors and see how you like them, see how they work with your style. Um, so I highly recommend Starter Set. And then beyond that, usually I'll either recommend that you go for the basic bones set, like the first 54 bones colors, um, or you go for the first 108 Master Series, depending on your budget and also what you're doing, what you're trying to do with your painting. Um, if you just are trying to get better, then I think the bone set probably is the really high utility. But if you're looking for some of those specialty usage colors, then the corset works for you. I'm just kind of bringing in some of my lights, doing a little wet blending into my wash. This is something that I do sometimes to just block in things. If I'm feeling lazy, throw a wash on it and then kind of wet blend into my wash. Bring in my darks and my lights. Try to bring out some of my details. Yeah, the starter set lasts forever too. Because they're thicker. Yeah, if you're dry brushing, Zealot, I don't do a lot of it. Um, but it depends on what where you are in your in your painting learning journey. So I tend to, to only dry brush terrain. So for me. But yeah, the consistency of the bones would work a lot better for that. Because you generally want a less fluid paint. Although I think Games Workshop goes too far because there are times where I like one of their colors, but then I look at it and it's a dry brush color and it's like, well, I can't use this because I can't use it as anything except that and it's really thick. So just bringing in some shadows here, trying to pick up a little bit of uh, contrast here with the grieve in the back. I do probably need to thin my colors now. When I'm wet blending over a base coat, I do like my paint to actually be thin, even though that seems weird for wet blending. Um, but I find that the more water's in it, the more the paints will blend together easily. So if I'm doing tiny blends or spot blends, or if I'm kind of doing this where I'm throwing a bunch of paint down and then I'm blending each section, um, I do find that thinner paint is better. Bone set is in stock too. Okay, good. Excellent. But then I am I am the girl who like would rather uh, teach somebody to fish instead of handing them a fish. So I do prefer to uh, encourage everybody to learn how to use the various paint and then come to a conclusion about what they like the best based on which techniques they gravitate toward. Because everybody's paint style is a little bit different. Got some nice darker stone down on the base. Gonna look at this. Gonna back up just a sec, guys. Back up. All right, so my base looks really dark right now, but it's actually not looking too dark if you compare it up to the top here. It's mostly I've, I've lost a lot. Didn't put a lot of my darks in through the, the torso here. So that's something that I need to remedy. I probably need to block in some more shadows. But I need to make sure they make sense too. So I need some more dark areas, but then I need to make sure my highlights stay in place. This should probably be darker, this area here. If I have to um, wipe out some of my uh, cracks, I can do that in my marbling. Because I did actually leave it pretty dark up here, 
so I need it to probably go dark in here as well. Salty paint. Look out, don't paint the, don't change the paint chemistry bug lips. Let's see here. Need my skin color to make sure I get these um bits of uh mar um turning alive to stand out. Don't want to lose the uh, feel that my statue is coming to life and I don't want to just concentrate on the front. I also want that feel on the back. I'm to that point in the model, and you guys who watch me a lot will know this point, where I'm working a little bit on various parts of the model, right? I'm pretty much got, I have everything mixed up that I need. And so I'm just going back and forth and back and forth. Uh, I've got two magentas, and I love both of them for different reasons, Preacher, but my favorite magenta is clear magenta, um, 9098 clear magenta. Wait, wait, where is it? It's a little bit less of a blue magenta. Our magenta with Reaper is very much a cold red, so which is what I prefer. Because I find that if a magenta is a little bit too dark and blue, I can't really use it as effectively as a red. It builds better purples that way, but it doesn't work as effectively as, as a type of red. Uh, so mixing it into reds is a little bit less effective. So I, I although I do have the Scale 75 Artist Color magenta and it is much darker magenta, um, I do usually reach for my clear because if I'm making um, like skin tone, rosy tones for skin and stuff, I find that this is a better magenta for that. So, you know, again, ask yourself, the best thing you can ask yourself is what am I using it for? Think about what you're using it for. Make your decision based on that. And have a couple, right? If you like a darker magenta, I know the Chimera Colors magenta is also a darker magenta. Um, and those are just different magenta pigments usually. But you should always be asking yourself about usage because you know how you are going to use the color is the most important thing oh dragon yeah um dragon actually margaret ran into that i think it was margaret um, on the road to tiamat also a lot of people recommend washes when you're starting out but don't think that you have to do it that way so if you put washes on your mini and you really don't like the dirty look, because I was in that boat. I, I started using washes and then I was like, I don't like how dirty this makes everything. And now I have to paint it all over again. Um, I just stopped using washes. I just started shading. I started painting in the dark colors where the dark colors went and not touching the rest of it. And it takes longer, but it's also going to build your brush control and give you a better result. So again, it's your goals, right? Whether you want to get things painted quickly for the tabletop or do you want them to, are you working on your techniques? Do you want them to look better, right? If you want a crisper, cleaner paint job, eschew watches, washes. Just don't, don't even do them. Just learn to layer in your shadows. Um, there are several different uh, magenta pigments, just like there are several different reds and several different uh, yellows. I mean, uh, our industrial paint chemistry buddies make, I mean, there's more than one. And some, some companies have proprietary blends. So, I mean, if you look up the pigment, like, numbering conventions, like, you'll see there can be... Like, I think I have the option for, like, three or four different red pigments. Uh, and the difference between them, um, iffy, just so you know, just for... Uh, or is it Anara who is asking that? Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um... So the difference between them is usually in coverage and in light fastness and in color. So when you're talking about a different red pigment, it may be a slightly bluer red, but a red that's really fugitive and weak. So essentially, I worked with a pigment briefly. Um, did I keep it in my bowl? Did I keep the hottest pink out here? 
I have a prototype color called the hottest pink. I think I put it away. But I made it with a red that we had like kind of a sample can of. And at first glance, you would think that this would be a better red. It was actually a little bit bluer and deeper, more crimson-y. Um, but when I added anything to it, it proved to be extremely weak. So like anything could overpower it. The tiniest bit of white could overpower it. At that point, then it's like, well, usage. With um, magentas, often it's light fastness. Some magentas are going to resist UV better than others, right? This is all chemistry. So it's not just about color. Uh, it's also about how you're, the usage. It's, it's about the usage of the paint, the utility of the paint. So some colors make more sense to use here, there, or the other place. Maybe that fugitive red had really good light fastness, but it was really weak. So when I'm going to mix it with anything, it didn't work, right? Um, I, I would say probably ours then. I mean, the darker magenta, like I said, is going to have limited usage when you're trying to make it a colder red because it's going to darken it also. Um, I, I just find that if I'm, if I want a greater range of my reds, that, that the, this is Queen of Credone magenta. I mean, it's the most classic magenta. Um, and so it's, uh, it is a cold red. I use it as a cold red. And it makes really good purples still. It may have, the other magenta may have, uh, may have better coverage. Who knows? I don't know. I haven't played with the other magenta as much. Uh, let's see here. Consistency. Okay. Behold bones line. Uh, we did not actually. Okay. So right away, let's, let's nip that in the bud cool pack. When I say that regular MSPs are a bit more fluid, I do not mean we added water. We did not at all. It is the resins of the base that give it that quality. So if you were to add water to your bones, it would not give you the same results as core. They're very, they're different resins. They're, they're different chemically on the, on the, the, the particulate matter that makes the paint dry and set into that plasticky type of thing that paint is. That's a resin. Uh, so acrylic, latex, vinyl, polymers, they're polymer resins. And so core is more, tends to be a little more fluid, not because it is watery, but because it is a different resin. So don't, don't go thinning down all your bones paint. You can use it the same. I mean, you should, you should have learned at least from watching me here, I'm using bones paint mixed with core paint. I'm thinning them the same. You're just generally going to get a little bit more coverage out of your bones. They are not like super thicker. Just paint with them the way you paint with anything. So it's, it's only, I mean, really this is where it comes to teaching you to fish instead of giving you a fish where if you have an understanding of your paint, where your paint consistency should be at for say layering glazes, washes, any of that, once you get a gut understanding of that, it doesn't matter how thick the paint you are is using or how opaque it is. You just thin it to the point where you can get the best result with it. Right. But I wanted to correct you right there because that's, that's not, is not true that we thin, thin down or anything like that. MSP core, MSP core acts the way it does because it's resin is completely different. Uh, let's see here. No, you are not using them wrong. They do tend to dirty the area, Everlina. That's why I stopped using them. Um, it actually, the reason you see a lot of orange blood angels preacher is because people don't understand how to highlight. That's one of the oldest problems with painting red is that it would tend to turn orange and it's not actually necessarily the color of red. Although, um, games workshops like blood red does tend to be an orange fit, orange scale red, like an orange shade red. Right. And there are definitely orange shade and blue shade reds, but that aside, if your blood angel is looking really orange, it's because your highlights are too big. So it actually, yes, you could add some cooler color. If, if part of the problem is that they are starting out with a very orangey red, then yes, that will contribute to it. And yes, you could add a little bit of magenta into that, but chances are it's also the size of the highlights that are shifting it that way. And also probably just an absence of shadows or a minimalization of shadows. Surface control is what I call it as far as what proportion of the surface you leave a certain color. But the baseline is that whatever color you leave the majority of your surface is the color it's going to look. The minute your highlights get too big, you start sliding that surface toward your highlight color. And in the case of red, this makes it look orange or pink. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, and if you're not on my Patreon, um, you know, like I said, patreon.com slash painting big. 
a lot of these color a lot of these questions are stuff that I talk about and we have a discord and pretty much anybody can ask questions I'll be catching up on discord later today guys I know I've been I've been on and on and off and off about and doing things but uh, but don't worry um, but yeah so recommended if you if you if you like this kind of granular level of paint knowledge and you want more of it I do a thing <laughs> it's it's what it's what actually pays the rent and uh, and food so <laughs> I appreciate everybody who's my patrons. Um, let's see here. Do, do, do. Let's see here. Catching up, catching up. Uh, Reaper Challenge League. Woohoo! Oh, next month has magenta as one of the colors. Nice. Um, it's actually magenta is clear magenta. Iffy. So 9098. You could probably also use, if you've got the glow colors, um, runic glow has a heavy magenta load in it. It's a lighter color though. Um, even, um, BCA pink, breast cancer awareness pink, which is a specialty color we only put out in October. Uh, that also is a based on magenta color, so you could use that. But they probably mean use clear magenta. And use it as a red, is my recommendation. Oh, Reaper John is working on the list. Well, I just gave you three colors, Reaper John. <laughs> yeah, no problem, cool. I just want, I just want to make sure you don't wreck your paint. <laughs> Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, let's see here. Washes. Yeah, I mean, well, it's a difference in preference, right? And yeah. Yeah, and hyper same same thing. It's and again, it comes down to your goals. What are your goals as a painter? Like if your husband is like, I want to get something that looks decent on the table and I don't want to have to spend a ton of time on any one model, washes are awesome for that. Um, but it, you know, the minute that you start entering into, I want it to look clean. I want it to look, you know, crisp. Then your goals are working against washes in general. Washes are not going to give you a crisp, clean look unless you end up putting the wash down as shading, but then painting over the whole thing. At which point you come to where I was when I decided I was just going to use lining and shading and stop using washes because it was costing me as much time to go back over all those areas that I covered with the wash and didn't want the wash on as it would have in the first place for me just to paint my shadows in like easy plus do making yourself do lining uh gives you better brush control right out the gate so it was a double a double whammy um a double bonus one could say just gonna add in a little bit more skin color here uh yeah bca pink Cact yes cactus flower is also magenta um just not a lot of people have that so Depends on if Reaper is trying to make it uh, accessible to people who uh, might not have some of those old uh, promo colors. Unless Cactus Flower is back in print or something. But, alrighty, we're getting this in. Got more of that in there. Shadows, working. I'm just working it all together now. Now it's like time to tie it all together. I want, when I look at the model from this direction, I want to see stone. Because this is our stone side. So when I, when I see the skin, it should be coming from the other side of the model, like this leg and that arm. Um, and mostly I should see stone on this side, which I do. And likewise, if I turn the model this way, I should see skin. I should see maybe a couple little bits of stone, but in general, this entire side of the model looks like skin. So except for the head, which is just the way that it went because the head is obviously cracked. So I had to paint it stone. Oh, I don't remember. It was a long time ago. I don't remember. Uh, Cactus Flower was in the Cowboy Reapercon, so it may have been the second Reapercon. I see, I see. I see, Reaper John. Yeah, well then, I would say Runic Glow counts as a magenta. Uh, BCA Pink counts as a magenta. Cactus Flower would count as a magenta if you have it. And, uh, of course, Clear Magenta is actually probably your best choice. Clear, mag I see Clear Magenta is your best choice because, guys, the more... The more mixability you have when you're in a limited palette, the better. So starting out with the purest version of the color gives you more breadth in adding highlights or shadows to it. Um, it's instead of starting with a lighter version of the color like BCA, where really if you add black or any darkening color to that, it's going to start to gray. It's going to start to go gray or it's going to overwhelm the magenta. So that's why I would recommend with limited palette, Unless you're choosing a color specifically to use as a highlight for everything or a shadow for everything, I would say go for the middle of the road on it. Mm 
No, didn't name the paint after the diner. I was just trying to find a... I, I needed to do the uh, a different color for the cowboy set and uh, realized that I could get that bright uh, hot pink in there if I did it that way. Yeah, but I mean, limited release, you know... It still, it still only benefits people like somebody who just came to Reaper and went, oh, this color challenge sounds good, you know, so cactus flower, not really an option for them. That's why I try to stick to in-print colors here on the stream, too, to make it more accessible for you guys. All right, I'm going to put, I'm going to make a bronze battle bikini because I'm going to do the shield red and I don't think I want the battle bikini to be red. I think I'd rather go metal because, hey, it's armor, right? It is going to make it really close to the skin, so I'm going to have to add some green and verdigris, and I'm going to have to... Now, this is okay, though, because the skin has to be really light here. I have to take it up highlight because the light is falling on it. So I don't think it's going to um, get too confused here with the Battle Bikini color. Do, do, do. It would be nice to get some painting done today on some other things. I did green work all yesterday to get this ready and I also did it on Rock Troll and a couple of other models. Well, Magenta is um is a primary Reaper John. Like CMYK, it's a primary in printing. Uh it's not the same as paint, but you can use it. Magenta still counts as a primary in my opinion. Like, it's still a red. It's just a cold red. It's just going to give people conniptions when they try to mix orange with it. Um, although it does work. You can mix a perfectly serviceable orange with clear, with clear magenta. But only with this clear magenta, not with the dark one. The dark one's going to mute out a lot more. So, yeah, I, wouldn't, I think it's good. No, I think it's good to get people working with magenta, John. Because, I mean, we want these paints to sell, right? Everybody has clear red or everybody's got, you know, blood red or some heraldic red, you know, they, it, using a basic red, no problem. But magenta, that might get them to use something that they wouldn't normally use and maybe they'll get to like it and that'll be cool. So. Blue, yellow, magenta. Yeah. Oh, I totally know. Man, I could, I could give you all the cheat. Like, there is a definitely... Uh, a, I think there's definitely an optimal color set for blue, yellow, magenta. Do you guys want, do you guys want the cheat? There is, a, there are, there are three specific colors I would choose that would let you mix almost anything with blue, yellow, magenta. Shall I, shall I, shall I, maybe I should just let them all like, uh, you want to hear it? All right. In my, in my opinion, Grey Wolf, and I take this, uh, also from, uh, my boyfriend, who uh, uses these use these colors like all all over the place on some a set of models uh, last year? So okay, in my opinion, the best three, if you're gonna go with magenta and blue and yellow, is cyan blue ninety one seventeen and candlelight yellow ninety four oh eight, along with clear magenta ninety ninety eight. You will find the amount of colors you can create from mixing these staggering like and decently good colors you like you can make a decent orange it's going to be a little muted but you can make a pretty good orange and a pretty good purple and it's all going to be like vibrant and pretty and it's going to be it's it's a really pretty color combo i could even show you um david david started painting a model with it and i absolutely love it so he, like, but he got sick of it, so he threw it at me and said, you finish it. I don't know if I showed you guys Toad. Toad is made with those colors. Maybe I'll go get Toad and show you. You had a feeling? Well, there's a reason for it, right, Ify? There's, I mean, I've mentioned I like this before. Hold on, let me get Toad. I'm going to show you guys this just real quick. We're, we're at the end of the stream anyway, so let me, let me close with showing you the secret here. And John will curse me because now I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. One sec. Getting Toad. Toad is back here sitting in our happy little case of partial doneness. We have a we have a miniatures uh, case in our office here that is pretty much meant for partially done models. So back up. All right. So Toad. Toad is painted with these colors. 
that's Toad. And obviously he's using a lot of white as well. But you can see he can get quite a vibrant orange. That's Toad. I love Toad. I just haven't like had the oomph to like work on Toad. So those are those three colors that I just mentioned. But yeah, so Toad. Toad and Toad and this is, those are those three colors. Those are the colors that are used with Toad. There we go. All right, Toad, put you back over here. So anyway, okay guys. So we didn't like it. Uh... Oh no, the 28 well palettes are out of stock. That's terrible. I'm very sad. I'm very sad. I'll have to like not break mine. All right, so I think for red, I'm going to just use heraldic red, but we'll get to that next time. So we didn't really do, like what we did today is we did some adjusting of some shadow colors. We made sure everything um, was brought down a bit so that we could put some highlights down here on the stone uh, and make it all work. We made sure that our skin color and our bronze colors were all like coming in on the front. We, uh, we, uh, made sure that when we looked at our stone side it was mostly stone and when we looked at our flesh side it was all flesh except for the helmet um yeah so we mostly did like tuning like what i i call is tuning when i'm doing this where i'm kind of adjusting everything across the board i'm working on things here and there and i'm slowly filling in everything to make it come together um and of course we the one thing though the component we don't have yet is ye shield here um, which I'll probably uh, put a solid coat of stone on um, and then at least mock in some of the, uh, the stripes that I want to put on it um, in living color. So, so there. So there we are so far, everybody. We are coming around. Oh, yeah. Well, you bought it when it was five bucks each. Yes. Oh, bought five. Oops. Well, at least you'll have palettes. But any questions, comments? anything else um that you want i think i think that's pretty much what we talked about that and we talked about mixing paint gosh we talked a lot about paint chemistry today a lot yeah and have a starter set give it a try preacher keep in mind don't thin it as much as you're as you might be accustomed to thinning other lines Like, usually my base coat with these guys is on bones, it'll be straight out of the bottle. And if I'm working on a primed metal or a resin figure, I'll do like a five to one, five drops and one drop of water. And remember, you don't have to add flow and prover or anything. Flow and prover is already in the paint. It's a, it's a, it's a, com that's a commonality to all Master Series paint. We add it so you don't have to. All you need is water. Alrighty. Yay! Everybody seems happy. Justin, do we have a... Um, oops, sorry. Justin's out of my ear. I couldn't hear him even if he did talk. One second. <laughs> All right, Justin, you're back. Who do we have to raid? Zambies. It's a Zambies day. Oh, does it slow the dry? No, Flow and Proofer doesn't do that. Flow, flow and Proofer is not drying or charter. We can talk a little bit more. Ask that, ask that question again, Preacher, if you hit us tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be working on our brand new model. By the way, guys, our, our dark our dark dwarf guy, he'll be fun. We're going to do a lot of metal on him. So we'll talk a lot about metallics on him in the coming weeks. Okay? Everybody have a lovely day and say hi to Zambies for me. Adios all. Thank you guys very much. Don't forget we have Painting Platinum at 3 o'clock today. And then at 6 o'clock we have our flagship show, Reaper Live. So if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit us with a follow. And uh, check us out uh, later today, guys. Thanks for coming by.